episodes, not channels. I don't get it. Is that this down here? What's happening, Fish and Friends? Welcome to another episode. Got a box, actually a couple boxes. One from Tackle Warehouse, one from Omnia. I got some stuff in. If you're into new plastics, maybe even some uh, some of the new chattering bugs, like that little guy right there, you'll be interested in today's video. Unboxing some lures, uh, some stuff from before Black Friday and Black Friday. All those sales are kind of trickling in. So enough yapping, y'all are here to see this, not my beautiful face. Okay, first off, let's start with the plastics. And these things, I actually thought I left maybe some food or something over here because these things reek. I was only able to get my hands on a couple of these packages. They were all the talk from iCast. Uh, apparently there was another version, like a, a Japanese made lure and people were like, oh, it's a knockoff, all this and that. Some people were like, oh, it's the coolest swim bait I've seen. This is the bait we have. This is the Berkeley Gillies. So you can see it's got kind of some little wings on each side here. The tail also has like a little rudder on back. So you're up and down and it's got your side kind of stabilizing fin. The body's interesting because you'd think all of this like is hard, but it's not. So when you, where do I go here? And the top here, uh, it's actually hollow part of the way through. So this part is hollow. That's where your uh, your hook would go if you rigged it like a normal swim bait. Apparently there's a number of different ways to rig this. I haven't got to fish it because it's, uh, it's cold as heck here in Iowa. So that is the Berkeley Ghillie in the HD Warmouth. That's the 130 size. I believe this is the biggest, which is, uh, I forget how many inches. But it's an interesting lure. I got that one and some green pumpkin. Definitely want to try these. Um, they looked interesting with all the iCast stuff. I know this was one of the biggest things. You know, people were talking about saying it's a game changer. Oh, it's just a copy. It's junk. I don't know. What do you all think? Comment below. The first thing I'm already asking to comment, but uh, the small lakes and, uh, and ponds around here that only have bluegill, I can't help but think they've never seen a plastic like this. I mean, it is the profile spot on. So I'm interested to try it. Maybe it's a big hoax. Maybe these have just, uh, you know, caught the fishermen, not the fish. You hear that a lot, but I'm excited to give it a try. The Berkeley Gilly, you get two in there. Uh, and again, both of those are the bigger 130 size. Okay, sticking with the whole Berkeley theme, the Chapo. Now these Chapos are pretty cool because they release some of the new HD colors. I don't know how they get it on here. I believe it's some sort of like printing process, but you can see it's it's not like, let me just grab one out. Now this is the HD Threadfin Shad. So you can see they're kind of that blue color. It's got your shad on on it, but you can see it's not paint. So it's like a, almost like a sticker or something, like a printed deal that they put on before they clear coated it there. Interesting, the new process is interesting. Kind of reminds me of the uh, the scum, like the launch frog, how it has that printed deal on it, not like a, just a, you know, like a painted color look to it. Cool looking bait there. That's the, uh, the 105 size, good sharp hooks. It's got those Berkeley Fusion hooks. Wasn't sure of those when I first got them, but they are solid, super solid hooks. Uh, now the thing about the Chapo that I didn't like as much is the tail's hard. So unlike a Whopper Plopper, it doesn't have the soft rubber tail. It's got a hard plastic tail, but it does put off a different sound. So some people like it. I know Rand Dizzle really likes the Chapos. Some people like it better than the Whopper Plopper. I guess it just depends what you like, but uh, that is the new Threadfin Shad HD color. I also got the HD color in the 90 size. This is the HD Bluegill. Doesn't that look cool? I mean, the colors on it, the pattern, very cool. It's a different way of doing it. Whatever the new process is, it's interesting. Now also in the Chapo, but this is the new size of the Chapo, the Chapo 75. So this is just the uh, the black chrome, nothing crazy about this one. Chrome's always a good color when you got a little bit of sun, put off that flash. Uh, and you can see on the tail there too, that is colored in chrome as well. So that tail's gonna be flashing. Um, but this is the smaller size, so it's got more of a, a larger body. Take it out of the package here so you can see. Tail again is hard on these as well, so not a soft rubber tail, it's that hard plastic tail. I believe the tail might be just a tad bigger. Nope. Tail looks to be the exact same size. So it's not like the uh, the Whopper Plopper, the smaller one they have, what is it, the 70? Gosh, I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, the tail is bigger, almost more like the 110, but it's got this shorter, smaller, compact body. Um, this has the same tail size as the 90, but a little bit shorter, smaller, more compact, fatter looking body. So be interesting to try. Uh, I like the Chapo. I like the new size, a little shorter one. Might do well in ponds and such. And I also got that shorter 75 size in the HD baby bass. And I'm guilty of not throwing baby bass colors enough, but uh, when the aquatic biologist Shan was on my channel, uh, we did a live, he talked about the lakes and ponds that you know really have an overabundance of bass. Bass eat other bass. And back in the day, I used to throw a pop R baby bass color. Um, had multiple things in baby bass color that I threw all the time. Lately, I'm kind of guilty of that. I haven't thrown baby bass colors a lot. So again, mimic that small bass profile 
uh, the uh, the Chapo 75. And as always, I will have everything linked below. Of course, I partnered up with Tackle Warehouse this year. I'll leave everything linked below. If you're gonna pick any of this stuff up, consider using my links below. A little portion of that does go back to me. If you wanna shop elsewhere, heck, like me, I've even got some stuff I got from Omnia here. Go buy from them, whoever you wanna buy from. It uh, doesn't matter to me, I still love you, Fusion friends. So next up, we're going from Chapo to Picasso which happens to be the Circuit Shaker Pro. You're wondering, well, what in the heck does that mean? Well, and you'll see why it's got this circuit board blade. It's not your regular metal blade, you know, that we're used to with like the, the Chatterbaits. Interestingly, they put a circuit board type lip blade on this thing. I don't know how it's gonna work. Now, you know, a big turn on uh, with the, the Chatterbait, the Jackhammer is that the blade hits the head and gives that clack, right? The metal against the head gives that clack. I'm thinking this is gonna be like more of a finesse deal. It's not gonna make as hard of a sound, I wouldn't think, being that this is, I would assume, gonna kind of absorb some of that. It's not gonna click on the head, not in the normal way that we're used to. So I don't know. I don't know how well this is gonna work. Maybe it's a gimmick. Again, maybe it's just something just to uh, to catch fishermen, but I wanna try it. I only grabbed a couple each because like I said, they are kind of expensive. But again, um, with these, I do like the Picassos, the, the heavy cover uh, that have this uh, weed guard deal on them. So again, Chatterbaits, I lose them all the time. Uh, I want something like that so I can fish it. And then again on the uh, Picassos, if you've never used them, they have like a little wire soft plastic keeper on there. So super sharp hooks, really well made. And the way that it attaches to the nose is a little bit different. It's not a split ring. It's almost like a clevis looking deal that holds that on there. Interesting. I grabbed another one here. This is the Gizzard Shad. So you can see a little bit lighter color. Again, it's got that circuit shaker, that circuit board lip. We'll see how those babies do. Now number two, interestingly enough, they had a couple different versions of these. Uh, this is the carbon fiber series. Now with these it says they do have the tungsten head. And what does it say here? Space age carbon fiber blade. By golly, I might be catching aliens with this. This, there's more of a click to it than the other one. The other one was very soft. Uh, again, this has got the carbon fiber lip on it there. Looks sweet. I got the black and blue in it. I wanted to stay with the dark blade, dark color, but Carbon fiber there, it's got your simple snap to tie on to. Tungsten head, so you can see this is a 3 8 and that, that head is tiny on there. And this is a black and blue, it's got a little blue flash, and look at that, man. That really stands out when it flashes. That's cool. Black and blue, great for dirty, muddy water. How well this is gonna work in the sound, I don't know. Once we get the pool up again next year, I can do some, uh, some testing of this. Then I also grabbed a green pumpkin gizzard shad. So green pumpkin on the top, it's got that kind of gizzard shad white iridescent green on the bottom. I like it. Good colors, like I said, in their stuff. We'll see, will the blades make a difference? I don't know. Now going from the Picasso bladed jigs back over to uh, the Z-Man Chatterbait bladed jigs, I did pick up another jackhammer. I have not used the jackhammer nearly enough. I had one, used it for two videos, and then got it stuck and lost it. I don't think I've ever fished one since then. But anyway, I bought one of these because when I was doing my live, I was talking about these, and I saw this color, I was like, oh man, Bama Bug. I think this is only available on Tackle Warehouse. I could be wrong, but I thought it said it was a Tackle Warehouse exclusive. Um, three eighths ounce, beautiful green head there, and it's got that green pumpkin purple. Y'all know I am a sucker for purple. I don't know what it is, it works. Uh, it's a little bit different, but I grabbed one of those to try, and the big thing that I knew y'all would be uh, interested in is the new Chatterbait Mini. So y'all saw a while back I did the uh, the larger shock blade, or uh, let's see I'm saying shock blades. The larger Chatterbait, in comparison, we got this guy. This is the Chatterbait Mini Max. Now I grabbed all of these in a 3 8 but look how small that blade is. Hold on, let's see, I got some over here. This is a Chatterbait Custom that I had sitting next to me here. You can see the difference in blade size there. The regular Chatterbait blade here and the Mini Max here. So a more of a subtle vibration, smaller, gonna be definitely a different sound that's putting off more finesse. And you can see, definitely uses a smaller profile. You can see the size difference there. And these actually have a pretty small hook on them, the uh, the Chatterbait Custom. Now some of the other Chatterbaits are gonna have even like a four or five aught hook. I believe this is a three aught. So you can see the difference there. I'm guessing this is probably a two aught, does it say? Ah, I was right, heavy duty. 2 watt black nickel hook right up there. So it says here, compact tournament quality bladed jig, ideal for situations that call for a smaller profile and more subtle vibration. That's kind of what I thought. So it's interesting. We'll see how this dude does. I did pick up some trailers uh, from Omnia for this little guy I'll show you here, but nice, cool, small little profile. I think that's gonna be a pond killer. A little bit smaller, a little bit more compact, but 
Who knows? I also grabbed white and chartreuse, all white, which they call pearl ghost. Gizzard shad, which is the green and white. I thought that could also mimic a uh, baby bass. That black and red color I showed you, the fire craw, and the good old black and blue. If you fish in the Midwest, throw black and blue. Uh, it's a good color here. Now the last thing in the tackle warehouse box was this stuff from Jenko. I really hadn't heard uh, a lot of them. It seems like recently they've uh, they put out a few different baits. This is called the Waken Bait. Looked interesting. I thought it was going to be bigger when I bought it. I should have paid uh, attention to dimensions. Floating four inches, three fourths of an ounce. I think when I saw this on the page, I thought, oh, that thing looks sweet. Thinking it's going to be a bigger, uh, bigger wake bait. Nope. The body, tail, everything together is four inches. So you can see there, not a very big bait at all. But this is their crappie color. I figured that can mimic a crappie or a baby bass pretty well. Cool little profile. It's got a single joint there. So as it wakes through, it's going to have that nice kind of uh, wobbly, uh, you know, kick in motion to it. You notice the blade is straight up and down here. Not two hangers, two different line ties right there. So I would assume one's going to get it down lower, one's going to keep it up on top. So a couple different ways to do that. It does have the soft uh, plastic tail. Did it come with an extra? No, nope, doesn't come with an extra tail. So I guess if you rip that off, you're kind of out of luck. But... Cool little profile. I don't remember it being too much. I think like 15 bucks. I know some people are going to say, what? But for a top water, something like this, I'm okay spending a little bit more like that because I rarely lose top water. I don't throw treble hooks unless it's, you know, relatively clear. Otherwise, I'll just go to a frog if there's a lot of vegetation and such. But interesting. Now, of course, I've got a bunch of these Tackle Warehouse shirts. I have a large here. As always with my giveaways, I got to do a giveaway. So I will be doing a giveaway of some of this stuff some other random stuff that I've got laying around and you'll get a shirt. So uh, if you would like to be entered, just say something below like, hey, I'd like to be entered or hook me up with some lures or just comment. doesn't matter what you say because I'm going to pick a random comment below, uh, pick a winner, and then I just pin the winner to the top uh, in a pin comment. Anyway, doing a giveaway, comment below. Okay, the next box, a couple of things that I got from Omnia, the little trooper, two and a half inch crawl looking bait from Berkeley uh, to kind of compete against the, uh, the TRD craws, I would assume, from Z-Man. I got this little guy. So this guy goes on a Ned Rig lure, or you know, Ned Rig head. I'm sure gonna put it on one of my EWG Ned Rigs. I think it'll look great on there, but little crop profile. This is just black, and what is it called? Black powder, they call it. They didn't have many colors available, but I wanted to grab some just to show you all. They look pretty cool. So you can see there, small profile, only a couple inches, super finesse. And here in the Midwest, we don't have those like crazy big craws. Um, and I noticed, uh, it's been a few years back, I timed it just right where there was a crawfish hatch and there was all kinds of craws this size. Now, I don't know if they would have been eating, uh, you know, my fake craws had I been throwing it. I was throwing a spinner bait that day and catching them. But, you know, little craws like this. So after a hatch, after a full moon, uh, you know, when they hatch, I think something like this would be very effective. Or just, you know, your smaller lakes and stuff that stinks. Little craw Ned Rig. Okay, these I picked up because they were very reminiscent of a soft plastic that I use a lot. Now, I'm not going to say who copied who here or what the deal is, but I got it because I want to try it. They look good. This is from uh, this is from Netbait called the Little Spanky, right? Little Spanky. This is in the sun, per co sun perch color. You get nine in here. Little guy. I tell you what, it looks sweet. Uh, put this on the back of a swim jig. Do I have any here? I don't have a swim jig, but by golly, I do have that Chatterbait Custom. Look at that on there. I love running like a small little profile paddle tail like this that doesn't fight against against the action of a Chatterbait. If you run something too big on here with too big of a tail, they fight against each other. It doesn't look natural. If you run a small, slender uh, little you know paddle tail with its own little action back there, they work well. One of my favorite trailers that I've used for a long time. So that's what the little spanky would look like on Chatterbait Custom there, which is a little bit smaller. I mean, come on, dude. That is like a pond killer there. Let's fix some of this skirt, get it up there. Oh, get your bluegill profile together here, Debo. Orange should be on the bottom for the belly, right? But anyway, looks awesome. I think that'll be a good one. The little spanky sun perch color, not as, uh, not as bright as I thought. It's a little bit darker color overall. But still good. Green pumpkin with kind of that orange belly. I also grabbed the silver shad, which is like a pearl iridescent white belly with some flake up top, black and like silver flake. And last is the smoking shad. So kind of a, yeah, the same kind of pearly white belly with like a black, blue, silver up top. Smoking shad, they call that one. Okay, I've only got a couple things left here. Again, the Missile Baits Mini D. So this chunk I'm really excited for. I think this is going to be a great chatterbug trailer and i just happen to have a little mini chatterbait here oh look at that 
Don't even need to trim it. That many chatterbait with that on there. I'm thinking early spring, this is gonna this is gonna do work. Small profile, those fish are coming out, looking to feed. Nothing too crazy, huge, insane. Uh, if you've missed my unboxing on these, these have kind of the flange on back, uh, similar to like the uh, the Rage stuff. It's gonna catch water, it's gonna have a really good kick. I saw John Cruz posted some, uh, some footage of these underwater. They look awesome. I think that profile, that little beauty right there will do some work. So if you've not seen those, the uh, the mini D from Missile Baits, little chunk trailer there, you can use it on your jigs. I'm excited to try it on a chatterbait, and it's got a flat bottom. My guy 10 Horse Monty Gabe gave me that little tip that uh, if you use a chatterbait with something that's got more of a flat bottom on it, the trailer, it's going to have more of a tendency to stay upright as you bring it over stuff, as opposed to a trailer that's rounded, the chatterbait will want to roll over, and that's when you get your chatterbait snagged. So something to try, a flat bottomed chatterbait. All right, now speaking of chatterbaits, vibrating jigs, I got these specifically for that. Now, I've talked about the Berkley Deal uh, a lot. I think it's an underrated vibrating jig chatterbait trailer. Well, Berkley just come out with these, and when I saw, oh my gosh. Oh, they stink so bad, that powerbait smell smells like rotten crawdads. Anyway, this is the Boss Grub. So it's almost like the mix between uh, like a, a Strike King Rage Menace mixed with the Berkley Deal. Looks awesome. The legs back here are thin. They're not really going to have much action of their own. I suppose you could use this on a swim jig. It almost reminds me of like the legs on the uh, the pit boss. So it might have some action that way, but I really think you put this on either way. I don't care how you rig it, up and down or vertically, horizontally on a chatterbait, and I think this thing is going to kill. This color is called bluegill flash. Kind of reminds you of that baby bluegill, kind of translucent with a lot of flash and glitter to it. I did also grab the three inch. This happens to be black and blue. And I do have one of those Chatterbait Customs here. There we go. That's what the little three inch looks like on there. I might trim the skirt just a little bit back there. A four inch would probably fit the uh, the Chatterbait better, but look at that. So that's those two compared. Which one do you think? Comment below and let me know which one you all think looks better. The deal on there or that mini D? And why am I, why is my camera so dark here? What's going on? Y'all know I like my purple, my June bug color. I grabbed some more of those in the four inch. I really like that color. Even just flipping and pitching this around, you know, wood and stuff, I think will do well. I also grabbed the swamp gas color. This kind of reminds me of like a Houdini color. Kind of that tannish on the bottom is a little bit more silvery, I guess, kind of mixed in there. But a good natural color. I felt like that's a good bait fish, young bluegill sunfish type thing uh, to mimic. I don't know, comment below, what do you think? So speaking of commenting below, that's going to do it. Comment below and let me know what you think. What was your favorite out of all this? Again, remember, I'm going to be doing a giveaway. So if I pick your comment and you tell me what your favorite was or you have something in there, I might try to include that. So comment below and let me know. Now, today's subscribe fishing friend is my guy, Rich Hello Bass. Super nice guy. He's got his own YouTube channel. Uh, I blame him for my Omnia order because he had his code. I don't remember what his code is. I'll link it below. Uh, but if you order from Omnia, he's got his own deal. Uh, and again, like I said, I'll link everything below uh, on Tackle Warehouse. But enough for me. It is late. I need to get all this on the computer and edited. So thank you all so very much for watching. I know my videos haven't been as much uh, or have not as been as often as I used to do with work and kids and everything. It's been crazy. But I need to get my butt back into gear and keep the videos going. I've got couple more rod and reel unboxings. I want to do some more uh, reviews for stuff that I used over the year. Best and worst lures. I got a bunch of fun stuff coming. So more to come. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching. And until next time. Mm -hmm.